Would it be possible just to quickly give a little bit of an, an overview of, of your uh, involvement with the Waco tragedy? Sure. Uh, of course, there's a book, Why Waco? So I'd always point you to the book. But if you go to the website, jamestabor.com, and look at some of the articles and materials, there's some Waco material there. And my YouTube channel has quite a bit on Waco. It's actually one of the categories. And we're coming up on the 30th anniversary. Essentially, my involvement was working with Dr. Philip Arnold, who uh, is from Rice University. And he and I began to realize within the first week of uh, the siege, this was 1993, so some of your listeners weren't born, but uh, 30 years ago this coming uh, February, on February 28th, and then there was a 51-day siege. Now, those of us who can remember, who are old enough to remember, if you are above the age of five or maybe up to 10 or 12, you would know that it captured the country. Uh, Bill Clinton was president. Janet Reno had just gotten in as attorney general. And so literally you'd turn your TV on and listen and they would, Waco was just constantly discussed like, well, what's happening today? This is day 38 or this is day 40 or whatever. And Arnold and I realized very early on that they were not understanding that this is an apocalyptic group like, like them or lump them or whatever you think about them. If you want to save lives, you have to work into their worldview. So our whole purpose was to try to provide the FBI with some understanding of how an apocalyptic group uh, views the outside. Unfortunately, they were delivering to David Koresh and his his students, he called them his students, uh, they were delivering to them the very thing that uh, would make it worse, meaning a kind of version of the apocalypse. And it ended in tragedy. And But we did uh, almost succeed. We got materials into David. He named us and said he would love to, to come out and meet with Dr. Tabor and Dr. Arnold. And it, it's sort of like one of those what could have been situations. Since then, uh, several of us have met with the FBI now for the past 30 years, and they've completely revamped their understanding of how to deal with a religious group uh, and to take into consideration their worldview rather than just saying, oh, this is a crazy cult. They're not going to surrender. They're not sincere. They're all kind of brainwashed. And so... But on my YouTube channel, James Tabor Videos, go down to Waco, and there's a three-hour discussion between four of us that were mostly involved. And it's basically, you don't even have to buy the book. If you want to buy the book, that's great. But it's basically uh, an analysis of everything that went wrong at Waco. So the key is to understand how a group that thinks they have a living prophet uh, they come from the Adventist tradition, and they believe that David was the final angel, the seventh trumpet in the book of Revelation, that would bring the final message to the world. And so this was their worldview. And it doesn't mean you have to agree with it. When we spoke with David, we never told him we agreed at all. But we would discuss his views intelligently, and we got his trust uh, Basically, it came down to negotiators, which I see as positive. They want to accommodate and understand and make positive effort and tactical people. Anybody remember the Randy Weaver case? It was the same group of FBI agents that uh, turned that into a horrible tragedy with Randy's wife and baby shot and all kinds of horrors. Uh, so... You know, I don't think it'll happen again, thankfully, but uh, in the 90s, we just weren't ready for dealing with this kind of thing. I think more is coming because we're in an apocalyptic time. You know, whether you think the end is near, you don't even believe in the end. Uh, so many things are happening in the world and even climate change and other things that are going to cause people more and more to... Uh, wonder if this could be the end and you'll have groups popping up as we already have that are 
uh, taking this or that view of apocalyptic. And that's not irrelevant to Paul, if you agree with my perspective, at least, that Paul also thought that he would live to see the end. Yeah, and so, so one of the ways of understanding Paul is not just to slam him and say, well, wasn't he wrong? You know, the world went on for 2,000 years. But understand how that affects, that sort of belief affects people in their decisions about ethics, about how they're going to conduct, in his case, his preaching. He didn't think he had much time. He talks about the appointed time has grown very short and so forth. So anyway, that's uh, glad to be asked about it. Plenty of resources uh, that can be uh, accessed.